Welcome to God's Word Fellowship. I'm Gerald Santiago. This is the Watchman Prayer Teachings. Let's pray. Father, we come to you in the mighty name of our Lord Jesus. Father, we thank you for your wonderful, marvelous love for us. Father, we thank you for your great love for us. Father, you are our King, our God, our Maker. Father, you are our Heavenly Father. Father, we thank you so much you created us and made us in your image and in your likeness. Father, we thank you made us able to have communion with you and fellowship with you as your children and as your family. And Father, we thank you for this great privilege and honor. And Father, we worship you, we adore you and we love you. Father, we thank you so much for your marvelous, marvelous grace toward us. Father, we pray you teach us your word today. Father, we pray you grant us wisdom, knowledge, understanding, skill and revelation in your word, your will and your love. Father, we pray you teach us, train us and help us to pray and to intercede and to function as watchmen. And Father, we pray you grant us wisdom, knowledge, understanding and skill to pray, to intercede and to function as watchmen. And Father, we pray you draw us into a deep, close fellowship and communion with you. Father, we pray you strengthen the prayer lives of servants of God and believers. Father, we thank you for your awesome help for us. Father, you are so good, so great and so awesome. Father, I pray that you stretch out your hand and heal everyone who is listening to my voice. Father, we pray your healing anointing drive out every form of sickness, every form of disease and every pain. And Father, we pray that your anointing drive out every form of uh, bondage, yoke and, uh, and weight and burden. And Father, we pray for your peace upon your people. Father, comfort them and strengthen them. And Father, we pray you strengthen their spirit, soul and body. Father, we pray you strengthen them to move forward, to overcome, to triumph, to succeed and to prosper. Father, we thank you for your glorious help for us. Father, you are our God, our maker. And we wait on you and we look to you. Father, we thank you for renewing our strength like the eagles. Father, you are so good, so awesome and so wonderful. Hallelujah to Jesus. Glory be to God. Blessed be your holy name. And Father, we come to you for our nation India. Father, we thank you for uh, the leaders and government servants and authorities that you have given our nation and our state and our city and our local areas. Father, we pray you grant them wisdom, knowledge, understanding, skill and revelation to lead and manage our country and in their jobs. And Father, we pray that you grant them wisdom to lead and govern our nation according to your path and your wisdom and in your plans for our country. Father, we pray you grant them wisdom to deal with other nations, particularly Israel and our neighboring nations. Father, you are so good, so great and so awesome. And Father, we pray for your good hand upon them. Bless them, bless the work of their hands. Borona menelatra, ebrun entre, ebrun krona lahegratra. Father, we thank you for your awesome help for our nation. Our nation is becoming stronger, prosperous and successful. Father, we pray that you use our nation as a mighty instrument in your hand to fulfill your plans and your purposes. Father, we thank you for your glorious help. And Father, we also pray for... Um, the presidential elections in the United States of America. Father, we pray you grant them an excellent president according to your heart and your will. Father, we pray you grant them a president who fears you, who is able and who will do your will. Father, we pray you stop the wicked from becoming president. And Father, we pray that all ungodly alliances against the man whom you have chosen be broken and destroyed. In the name of our Lord Jesus, we bind every work of the devil against the man whom God has chosen. 
In the name of our Lord Jesus, no weapon formed against the man whom God has selected will prosper. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, let every scheme, every plan, every device, every weapon, every strategy against the man whom God has selected be broken and destroyed. And Father, we pray that you deliver your man from every snare of the devil and from every snare and pit prepared by men. For the you are greater heaven and death and hell are open before you. How much more the hearts of men. Nothing is hidden from you. Darkness is as light before you. Father, we pray for your protection upon your man. Father, we pray for your deliverance. Hallelujah to Jesus. Glory be to God. May your good hand be upon your man, Father. And your favor be upon him. Surround him with your mighty favor. Father, we pray for a glorious victory. A mighty victory. Father, we thank you so much for your help. And Father, we also pray for Israel. Father, we pray. We pray for your peace and prosperity upon Israel. Father, we pray for your blessing and your favor upon Israel. Father, we pray you keep Israel as the apple of your eye. Father, we pray you stretch out your hand against the adversaries of Israel. Father, we pray you smite them before the face of Israel. Let them flee from Israel seven ways. Father, we pray no weapon formed against Israel will prosper. And Father, we pray for your good hand upon Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu. Father, we pray for your strength, your help and your support. Father, we pray that you set him up in a solid ground. Solid ground. Let him become stronger. Let him thrive and prosper and succeed. Father, deliver him from all the snares and pits that have been prepared against him. Father, you are the greater one. And Father, you are the most high. Father, we thank you for your awesome help for us. Father, we thank you so much. You heard and answered our prayers. Father, in the name of our Lord Jesus, we pray. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah to Jesus. Glory be to God. You know, our God is good and He is the Most High. And He is still working in the kingdoms of men. Our God is deeply involved in the kingdoms. Contrary to popular opinion, God does not um, look at uh, the political arena and, uh, you know, turn his face away from them. <laughs> no, no, no. God is very much invested in these things. And he wants us to learn about these things and uh, cooperate with them through prayer so that he can move mightily in our nations and in other nations for the purpose of God's kingdom. Hallelujah. Hallelujah to Jesus. Glory be to God. Blessed be His holy name. So um, I encourage you to you know speak to God about these things. Make yourself available, right? Start wherever you are. You know, don't think, oh, I have to start somewhere. You know, spending like three, four hours with God a day. Only then I can be a proper prayer and warrior. No, just start wherever you are and yield to the Holy Spirit. Ask God to teach you to pray. You know, begin wherever you are. And the Holy Ghost will help you. He will build your prayer life. Hallelujah. Hallelujah to Jesus. Trust God. Right? In all things, right? no matter what it is, if you want to develop a thirst for God's presence, you want to develop a greater desire for the word of God, ask God, grant me that desire. Grant me that thirst. I want you. I want to be in your presence. I want to know more of your word. I want to seek your word. Help me. You know, God will do that for you. Hallelujah. The Bible says, Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness. And do you know what the promise is? They shall be filled. They shall be filled. God says, Open your mouth wide and I will fill it. I will fill it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah to Jesus. Alright then, let's go to our text today. Go with me to... Psalm 27, let's read from verse 4. One thing have I desired of the Lord, that will I seek after, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, to behold the beauty of the Lord 
and to inquire in his temple so notice david has written this psalm and he is a king and notice his top desire what does he say one thing i have desired you know the strength in that phrase is is, is magnificent one thing one thing i have desired of the lord and this is what i want <laughs> if this is there then i don't need anything else i'm i'm happy right <laughs> this will make my <laughs> not just make my day it will, it will basically make my entire life one thing i have desired of the lord that will i seek after he is you know this is a man who has sought god right for years and and he has learned how god works and how his kingdom functions he knows about um, uh, the covenant he has learned about the heart of god he has understood how loving god is and how god has prepared good things and great things for him even before he was ever born right you know it was not adam who prayed and received the earth and all the good things here no god had prepared all that before adam was ever formed right god prepared this earth made it right filled it with good things right filled it with the blessed things filled it with his glory and then made his son first god prepared this glorious earth right as a suitable habitation for his son and then made him and then handed over this unique planet into the hands of his son now contrary to you know some what uh, some of the scientists say and what and contrary to the opinions of many people who don't believe god uh this earth is not uh, you know a purposeless small speck of dust in the corner of a universe no this earth is unique the scientists as they are studying more and more they are amazed at the uniqueness of this earth and how much it has been fine tuned so that life and particularly man can exist in this planet yeah. even the most ardent opponents of uh, god and uh, you know <laughs> opponents to the existence of god atheists and the people who propagate it even the most ardent of them even they are not able to negate this you know this evidence where you can see fine tuning of all these most vital factors for the existence of life on this planet now they are not able to negate it they don't even have an argument for that hallelujah uh, god prepared everything for man and just gave it to man it's just amazing you know man did not do anything to earn this what have we done to earn such a glorious earth a unique planet where life is possible right where life is easy we are not struggle <laughs> we are not trying to acquire oxygen so that we can survive right yeah. we didn't come up with this carbon based life forms in the earth and the abundance of carbon that is available to sustain that life and things required for life we didn't come up with the concept of water under the <laughs> availability of abundance of water on this planet hmm? none of us came up with any of it god thought about it and provided all this for us freely hallelujah see david is a man who meditated on god's word and he understood the heart of god the more he he was meditating on who god is and the more he understood about uh, the loving kindness and the tender mercies of god he understood something something dawned in his spirit if i can have god 
and if i can cleave to him stick close to him then i don't have to worry about other things in my life the god who loves me will provide for me all that i need and all that i desire see he has understood that concept so he said okay since i have such a good god who loves me and cares for me and provides for me all i need is god right see that's what jesus is saying in matthew chapter 6 right go with me to matthew chapter 6 the very foundation for the teaching of our lord jesus is this god loves you he cares for you deeply right you are more valuable than the birds and the grass and all the other creation they were made for you they were made for you your heavenly father knows that you need all these things right he knows and because he knows he has made them available already before you ever came to know about blessing god has already prepared blessing he came up with the idea of dominion he came up with the idea of authority he gave up came up with the idea of sowing and reaping he came up with the idea of being fruitful and multiplying he empowered man to be fruitful and to multiply god is the author of all blessings and and he did all that for you and for me you don't have to spend time trying to convince him to bless you no he has already made up his mind to bless you before he ever made you before he ever made you his mind is already set hallelujah hallelujah to jesus you know in hebrews hold your hand here we will come back here go with me to hebrews hebrews chapter 6 look at this beginning from verse 10 this is one of my favorite passages which i read almost every day for god is not unrighteous to forget your work and labor of love god doesn't forget what you do for him you know and he is encouraging the christians to hold fast to jesus and to continue serving him right then he goes on to say that you be not slothful but followers of them who through faith and patience inherit the promises notice it is inherit it doesn't say earn it now inherit is very different from earning earning means you worked for it inherit it means somebody else worked for it and they have obtained it and you are inheriting what they have obtained yeah right? that's what happened to us through jesus jesus worked for it and obtained it and we are inheriting it abraham received the promise isaac jacob joseph and israel inherited it very different right um so keep those thoughts in mind it's very important to understand this for when god made promise to abraham because he could swear by no greater he swore by himself see if god just speaks it it is eternal it is forever god doesn't lie god doesn't change he didn't need to do this but he swore swore what did he swear to do surely blessing i'll bless you and multiplying i will multiply you verse 15 and so after he had patiently endured he obtained the promise <laughs> he received the blessing and the multiplication now notice this verse 16 for men verily swear by the greater and an oath for confirmation is to them an end of all strife strife those days when people want to settle something they used to swear and they had uh, they valued their words they were very particular about keeping their word they took swearing very seriously so when they swore that was the end of the matter and even the most ungodly person will keep whatever they swore you remember laban he enters into a covenant swearing to jacob that he will not cross over that um, you know pile of stones that they arranged uh, to harm jacob right i will not chase you i will not come after you i will not try and take your stuff from you you also don't cross this for harm 
no you can visit but don't 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 cross the stone to harm me right you understand that he entered into a covenant so that he can be protected hallelujah and now you see abimelech swearing to uh, isaac and uh, abraham right and um, so you have this was the way they settled matters in those days in verse 17 he says this wherein god willing more abundantly to show unto the heirs of promise the immutability or the unchangeable nature of his counsel confirmed it by an oath why did god take this extra step of swearing as if he is he is not a man he is not going to lie you can trust god he is trustworthy but yet he swore why so that we would understand that what he is saying is an unchangeable counsel for my life right we are the heirs of promise through our lord jesus so this is when god said this he not only said that to abraham he also said it to the heirs of promise and we are the heirs of promise along with israel so it was spoken to us god has basically sworn to us saying i'll bless you and multiply you it's an immutable unchangeable counsel and because god has already made up his mind to bless us to multiply us we don't have to worry and fear about our future and provision no we don't we don't really don't have to now we can pray we can believe god but we don't have to worry do you understand this right because god has already made up his mind to bless us to provide for us hallelujah see it is in light of this kind of revelation that jesus is saying for after all these things do the gentiles seek now the gentiles don't have god they are people without covenant without hope without god they have to fend for themselves so they do that they go around seeking these things because that's the only option they don't have god in their life they don't have a covenant from god right that's why they do it but that's not the way we are supposed to live why for your heavenly father knows that you have need of all these things and he has already made provision for it right he made the answer ready first before you ever got to know that you have a need you know i'm going back to creation something the holy ghost has been teaching me quite a bit for for some time now you know before man knew that you he will need more food <laughs> that he is going to multiply and the population is going to increase and we will need to produce more crops more uh, trees so that we can have more grains more fruits right before man ever faced that problem situation where he needs more god had already prepared a solution he had given him the seed all he had to do is sow according to the measure that he will need and he if he will sow according to that measure then he will have a harvest according to his, according to that measure with which he sowed right right if he needed to feed 100 people then there is a certain amount of seed he had to sow and uh, he would get that amount, that kind of harvest if he needed to feed 1000 people then he had to sow accordingly right more amount of seed more amount of land would be required hallelujah but see notice before man ever ran into that situation god had already prepared the solution right do you see this hmm? before man ever realized okay i like non veg you know god had already made animals <laughs> Okay. and and do you notice that all the fruit i mean the fruits the vegetables uh, the um, and the non veg all of them were created in such a way that they would nourish our bodies all of them every one of them right whether it is fruits or vegetables right or non veg whether it is the birds or the land animals or the fish all of them are made in such a way that they would nourish our bodies what is that reveal to you they were all made for you and me 
do you understand the purpose of their existence is to benefit us that's how god made them you are seeing this right god knew that what we would need and he has already made provision for it right so jesus is saying your god knows it he has already made the provision if you will focus on seeking the kingdom of god and his righteousness if you will put god first and seek him all these things that you need will be added to you do you know that god always gives more than enough he, he never gives you just enough he gives you more than enough see some people take this idea of um, god giving manna right according to what they needed see it it was supposed to last only for that time of travel right from uh, the red sea till the border of canaan land actually the journey is only 11 days but because these people you know they were faint hearted god you know god knew that these people would turn back to egypt if they see war so he took them a roundabout way for a year and a half or two years let's just keep it like that two years eh right? that's all it was it was meant to be for two years and god did that to teach them train them to humble them so that they will look to him trust him and receive uh you know things from him time and again he led them to tough spots he led the, he he led them to the place of mara right why not so that they will die of thirst they needed something god is walking with them he wanted to train them to turn and look to him and receive help right instead they spent their time grumbling moses was the only person who would look to god and receive the answer and god did have mercy upon them and turn the water of mara from you know from being bitter to sweet and he turned the bitter water into sweet water again when they come to a place where they had no water god expected them to look to him and receive help but they were grumbling and complaining and again moses on their behalf looked to god and god brought water out of rock and met their need see god was teaching them to have faith and to look to him and trust him and receive help so that by the time they come to the land of canaan they will meet their adversaries there and instead of turning back and running away they would have enough faith to look to god and to receive victory over their adversaries so the entire process was a training period for them do you understand this you remember jesus told his disciples you know don't take any anything purse or you know script or extra dress nothing right not so that these <laughs> jesus did not say that's because he wanted his disciples to live in poverty no he said the laborer is worthy of his wages he said when you go there whoever is ministry who whomever you are ministering to your provision will come from those people you know because they are receiving spiritual things from you god will arrange it in such a way that they will provide the material things that you need jesus was training them to trust god and receive you understand that later at one point of time you know in the during uh, the last supper jesus asked them did you lack anything when i sent you and they said no we did not lack anything see do you understand this and even during these times notice god was faithful to provide right so god will not only provide right but he will provide you in abundance see when, when these people uh, were being led by god in the wilderness nobody was uh, half stomach full nobody was <laughs> right living with empty stomach now they were all satisfied they were all filled yeah right? only during that time they were given daily food right daily on a daily basis god kept giving them stuff but once they entered into canaan land it is a land that flows with the milk and honey good and a large land they had abundance they had to build storage storehouses to store the extra stuff hallelujah do you see this this is how god is 
Now, why are we looking at all this? I want you to understand this. See, David had a good understanding of who God is. Right? He understood that God is the heavenly father, the loving father who provides for his children. He, he is not going to uh, forsake me. He is not going to let me suffer in poverty. If I am sick, he will heal me. If I am in danger, he will protect me. If I need something, he will provide for me. If I have a desire, he will fulfill it. I want you to look at this verse. You know, God said this while he was passing a judgment of his on uh, David uh, in concerning the matter uh, of Bathsheba and Uriah, right? And uh, this is what God said. It's amazing what He said. Go to Second Samuel, chapter. Okay, chapter twelve. Is when Nathan is speaking to uh, David, right, by the Holy Spirit. Verse 7, And Nathan said to David, Thou art the man. Thus saith the Lord God of Israel, I anointed thee king over Israel. I delivered thee out of the hand of Saul. Right? What, what did God do for him? Made him king over Israel. <laughs> Protected him, delivered him from the hand of Saul who was out to destroy him. I gave thee your master's house and your master's wives into your bosom and gave thee the house of Israel and of Judah. Notice this. And if it had been too little, I would moreover have given unto thee such and such things. And if you wanted more, God is saying, I would have given you. You didn't have to go and you know, covet another man's wife, take her and then kill that man. You didn't have to do that. If you had just had to look to me, you wanted more. If you asked me, I would have given you. Right? Do you see this? Now, this is the God we are serving, who likes to give things to his children. A heavenly father who loves his children and eh, provides for their children, likes to give them a cup that overflows. That's his nature. See, it is because of having this understanding that David said in Psalm 23, My cup overflows. Because he knows God. This is God's nature. My God is a good shepherd and he keeps pouring in my cup until my cup is full and it keeps overflowing. Right? He understood God. And therefore, he is confident if I will just, if I can just stay close to God, my life is fixed forever. If I can just, you know, seek him, and his presence. If I can right, stay in the house of God or in the presence of God all the days of my life, okay, God will take care of me. God will provide for me. God will protect me. God will bless my life. See, he has understood that. That's why he is so bold. Do you see this? Hallelujah. In closing, let's go to Deuteronomy. I think we are ready to close. Go to Deuteronomy chapter 30. Notice what is God saying here. Verse 19, I call heaven and earth to record this day against you that I have set before you life and death, blessing and cursing. Therefore choose life that both you and your seed may live. How do you choose life? That you may love the Lord your God. See, that's how you choose life. You love God, who is the source of life, who is the source of all blessing, that you may, that you may obey His voice, who is the author of all blessing and goodness, that thou may cleave unto Him. See, this is the purpose. right? You love God, you obey His voice, and you cleave to Him. And why? Why should I do that? For he is your life, the length of your days, that you may dwell in the land which the Lord swore unto your fathers to Abraham, Isaac to uh, Abraham, Isaac and to Jacob to give them. Or you can also say that you may walk in the blessings that God has prepared for you. 
because for them that the land was the blessing that God had prepared for them. Right? For us, all the blessings that God has given us in Christ Jesus would be the equivalent of what they enjoyed. Right? God the Father is our life, the length of our days. Right? And when we love Him, obey His voice, cleave to Him, we will walk in the blessings that God has prepared for us. So the focus should be on loving God, obeying His voice and cleaving to Him. See, David understood this. <laughs> and that's why she's praying, one thing I desire, one, one, one thing. I want to be close to God. I want to dwell in His presence. Eh? And as long as that is there in my life, I will have all the other blessings. See, this is why Moses said, if you, if you are coming with me, I will go to that promised land. If you are not going, I am not going anywhere. <laughs> you understood that? That's why Moses said that. I, I, you know, God willing, we will look at how Moses understood about the presence of God, uh, what Moses understood about the presence of God and how he saw it. Right? Next week we will look at that. Hallelujah to Jesus. Thank you so much for listening. I encourage you, right? Cleave to God. Spend time in His presence. Ask God for it. I want to dwell in your presence. Right? I want to love you with all my heart, with all my might, with all my understanding, with all my soul. Right? Ask God. Let Him help you. God, God, God will definitely help you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah to Jesus. Thank you so much for listening. God bless you. Jesus is coming soon.